when you really study him and, and you see interviews, the movies that he loved, that he did, that he's most proud of are quite surprising. Slapshot is always one of his favorites. So is Judge Roy Bean. So is Buffalo Bill in the Indians. You know, these are very eccentric movies. Okay, guys, show us what you got. Oh, good morning. Hey. Good morning, so, Corey. I'm good. I'm really excited to talk to you actually about this documentary because I'm a massive Paul Newman fan as well as Joanne Woodward. But I got to say, I have to start it. I'm from Montreal in Quebec and the Paul Newman movie here that has the biggest following is Slapshot. Slapshot. Yeah, like, I knew where you were going. In a huge way. And I just, I wanted to say, I thought it was really cool in the documentary that you talked about the fact that Newman had kind of an affection for this movie because I think everybody sees him as this kind of serious actor guy who wouldn't necessarily love doing something like that, but it was the opposite. It was the opposite. You know, it's really, when you really study him and, and you see interviews, the movies that he loved, that he did, that he's most proud of are quite surprising. Slapshot is always one of his favorites. So is Judge Roy Bean. So is Buffalo Bill in the Indians. You know, these are very eccentric movies. And I think he was, he was kind of put in the movie star box. Yeah. And the movies that he loved were the ones that kind of broke that box. Um, to me, probably the one of the greatest performances I've ever seen in a movie was The Verdict. And I was just wondering for you, for our audience, for Joe Blow's audience, which is probably younger and that hasn't seen as many Paul Newman movies, what would you say to me is the place that they should start if they're going to dig into Paul Newman's filmography? I would say The Verdict. What would you say? Um, well, I think there's certain ones that are essential viewing. And yeah. the, the verdict is definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go Hustler, HUD, Cool Hand Luke, Butch and Sundance, and The Verdict, right? Nice. And, and then I would quickly follow it up with Color of Money, yes. Slapshot, <laughs> Judge Roy Bean. Uh, and I know we're forgetting one. You, you know, I mean, there's... Uh, oh, and you know what? There's the grace note of Nobody's Fool. Oh, I mean, that's a great movie too. Yeah. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. And so he his his contribution is amazing because like he has like 10 movies that are on the top 100 of all time. Yeah, for sure. You, you know, I mean it's like he is what, you know, a first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, I keep forgetting HUD too. HUD is really good. It's <laughs> amazing. Um, and you know, Buffalo Bill and the Indians is really yeah. Buffalo Bill and the Indians. If it came out today, would be wildly heralded. It came out in 1976, and he was lambasting the white American male. I mean, our incorrigible ability to lie to ourselves and everybody around us about how great we are. I mean, and and he he was just that's the he just takes his whole legend to task. You know, it's a it's a scathing self portrait. Buffalo Bill and the Indians. Um, your daughter, Maya Hawk, who's an amazing actress, says something really cool at one point and that really kind of blew my mind about how as people, as individuals, we're one thing, but then when we're a couple, we're another. And I thought that that kind of really sold the whole thing to me. And I just wanted to know if, if you could tell me a little bit about Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward as a couple in their movies were this kind of entity. And I don't think I've ever seen another couple in film that puts so much of themselves on the screen. Like I could really see kind of the ups and downs in the relationship. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that and what movie they did together to you that kind of sums them up the best. Well, I mean, if that was the biggest happy surprise about making this documentary is realizing how much they work together. Hmm. And I realized I had all this footage of them acting together and all this footage of them portraying different aspects of themselves. He's calling on his lady love. For me, it is, it is so cool to watch something like The Long Hot Summer. Yeah. Watch them both be so foxy and fine, doing, you know, hot, sweaty, sultry William this Faulkner novel. Pack. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then intercut it with Mr. And Mrs. Bridge, yeah. you know, James Ivory's masterpiece on uh, on 
they're playing aspects of their own marriage, the ways in which lifelong love is really enriching and the ways in which it's boring, the ways in which it's challenging. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Bridge is a deep film. And I'm so impressed with them that in their 70s, they would make such a discerning work of art. I mean, that wasn't a populist entertainment. That's no. Mr. and Mrs. Bridge is a work of art. Yeah. And, and I'm so proud of them for being the same, their idealism carrying deep into their life. And now it's full of experience and wisdom, you know? So I think what's remarkable about them, well, is just the, the longevity and the sustained excellence. I mean, the thing, if I had to pick one, it would be Rachel Rachel. It was oh, the, first, the first film he directed. Yeah. And it was, she had been basically semi-retired. You know, this is a woman who won the Oscar in a, the next year, had her first baby, became a stepmother to three more, then quickly had two more kids. So in a span of five years, she became the mother of six kids, had her whole career knocked off the altar, you know, um, knocked off the table. And she really wanted to do this movie, Rachel, Rachel, that she couldn't get financed. So they took their own money and Paul directed it. And it's really, it's just so surprising to me that Butch Cat, the same year he did Butch Cassidy, he would make this small, delicate movie about a, a woman's midlife crisis, you know? And it's, it's almost like a French film. It's so subtle, but it's sharp and well-made, beautifully crafted movie. And I think there's a lot of them in that movie. I mean, he was a great director, too. There's that part in sometimes a great notion when his brother's drowning, which I think is one of the best set pieces in a movie that I've seen. Yeah, you know, I mean, it killed me not to include it. The problem yeah. was it's, it's, it's so magnificent. I, I often would say, like, it's one of the best nine minutes of cinema that exists. Oh, yeah, yeah. The movie itself is kind of big and massive and lopsided. I, I actually really enjoy the movie as mm -hmm. a whole, but that scene... If I directed one thing in my life as good as that scene, you know, it's it's just, it's a masterpiece. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like you watch those nine minutes, like you said, and you think it's probably the greatest movie ever made, even though, you know, the movie itself is kind of, you know, so-so. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. It was great talking to you, and I, I love the doc. Oh, thanks. Thanks for your time. Take care, man. Right before the pandemic started, one of Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward's kids approached me to direct a documentary about Paul and Joanne. Paul had begun working on a memoir. They did over 100 interviews. He said to him, tell the truth, stuff they would never say if they weren't with friends. What happened to these tapes? He poured gasoline on them and lit them on fire. Wow except they had had them all transcribed. I'm trying to turn it into kind of like a play with voices. A community looking back. Laura Linney's gonna do Joanne Woodward. George Clooney agreed to read Paul. Blue is the color of the planet from the view. My meeting with Joanne gave birth to a sexual being. Long live our race. I am simply a creature of her invention. Long live when they first married, she just won the Oscar. She's the star. But we're just beautiful people with beautiful problems. And then the trajectory just changed. Beautiful problems, God knows we Nobody understands anybody else's relationships. Only the two people who are involved know what binds that relationship together. We gotta walk through fire. As in all things, you can do anything you want to if you're willing to pay the price. Beautiful people with beautiful problems.